So everyone, uh, welcome back to uh, Tyson Plays FTL. We're not starting in blackness this time. I'm trying um, to utilize some recording equipment since I have that with a much better microphone. Why not get some engagement going? And Stark will probably stop in to say hello too. Um, it's his cat tree in the background, so he's probably going to go jump onto that right now. Um, we had a lot of positive reception for the last um, playthrough of FTL we did. So I thought, oh, let's go ahead and continue this. And we did have one one vote for going through the nebula. It's like you guys just want to see me try stuff that uh, you know is going to give me some issues. Oh, crap, I can't remember. Hold on. It's been a while since we've done this. Okay. That's not a bad... Okay. And considering we're still a pretty good ways away from the end. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Let's let's go to the Mantis controlled sector, which means I will eventually have to hit at least one nebula. Thank you again for voting for that. It's always my favorite. Okay. You've entered the poorly charted area of space, known to be home to the Mantis. Ensure your whole plating is up to scratch, and you have enough fuel in the tank to make it through. That's a weird situation, because this I have literally not played this game since the last time I recorded, which is about a month and a half ago. So being reacquainted with my... Oh, there! I'm the captain. DM is the fighting. Bacchus is rock stupid, and Kelvin is, is the brains of the operation. Sounds about right. Let's see what this distress beacon's about. Once you arrive at the location, call a civilian ship hails you. Thanks for responding to our beacon. Our FTL navigation has gone haywire, and we can't plot a course for the nearest depot to get it fixed. Can you lead us there? Oh, of course. Worst case scenario, it's a trap. Take this bit of scrap as a down payment. We'll follow you, and you're really helping us out here. Really? How is this not always a trap? Because I can't imagine this being a scenario that would ever happen. Yeah, sorry, our, um, <coughs> our, our phones have gone offline, so um, we, we need you to, to drive us to Pittsburgh. Just pull into that gas station over there. You're immediately hailed by an impressive looking Mantis ship. Yeah, the mighty fine prize. Let's prepare for battle. Yep. Wonder where he's gonna go. Wonder where the oxygen. Alright, let's swoop on in here with two nothing to do's. I'll be honest, this is um, this is an interesting playthrough so far because I would not call it a successful playthrough yet. We've got um, means to get through these basic shields here, but until I can get that upgrade to get that second gun going, I'm just kind of playing catch up with one gun. The two levels of shields about the only thing uh, keeping this boat afloat. That and strategic aiming and the whole laser. Of course, the whole laser. Pick up more chatter from the enemy. You know what? Forget this. Prepare for retreat. <laughs> they are not the bravest of enemies to face at times. Although the famous Kalikliklex. Oh, I can't remember that Mantis Hunter's name. You can actually get him on your team if you play your cards right. I've done it a couple times. This ship breaks apart and you move on to scrap the remains and get a shield charger booster. Recharge booster? Shield charge booster. That is fantastic. But the only thing I like more than that is the automated reloader. You have that along with a couple of burst lasers. The game is yours. Alright, do we have enough? We do! <laughs> now we're cooking with gas. I just spent all my credits, so probably not going to go to the store. I'll see if we get a couple more in this next jump. <sighs> Pulsing Ion Star. Not my favorite. Chain laser there, burst laser there. Thank goodness I'm not using any drones because that guy would dismantle them immediately.
Well, at least they didn't take down the whole beam yet. Come on, whole beam. You're the only thing that's gonna carry me through this fight. Why? No shields. Turn off the oxygen for a bit. Have you fixed the doors? Go, 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 go. And let's go ahead and change you to the droid. Because the problem with droids, when they work too well... Yeah, see? He loves these scratching posts. Get out of Stark. When the droids work too well... I'm going to accept their offer because this battle is getting ridiculous. Okay. I might not even survive even though I accepted their surrender. 28% oxygen. Oh my goodness. Let's... Did I have anyone die? I'm shocked I didn't have anyone die. Let's turn the O2 back on. Let me wait here for a second. I'm... I'm gonna jump to the store now, because I need to repair. It can turn on a dime, this whole game. In fact, I'm surprised this Let's Play didn't end right there. Because you play your cards wrong, in the wrong situation, it's over that fast. Alright, the ship headed toward the node raises what's left of its shields as you jump in. You power up your weapons and some show force. So you're looking to agree to offload some cargo on you for a price. It's never easy. And we even have fire suppression on this, and I was still feeling like that blaze was going out of control. <sighs> I'll just fix as much as I can. I should have enough fuel to get through the rest of this sector. There we go. And now let's heal up everyone, because... Once again, two level of shield? It's not going to cut it soon. In fact, it, it was barely cutting it right there. Let's get you healed up again. Hey look, and we're all at our predetermined spots now. You heal. You heal. So. I'll be honest, it took me a long time to actually understand why this game made me want to play it. Because it is so frustrating at first. But you can see, even when you don't have the best... No, I don't need any missiles. Oh, he's trying to pawn off... Um, there are sometimes really good trades. This is not one of them. Even during uh, your bad runs, you can make... You can have some good headway. But at first, it's nothing but bad runs because you don't realize you're making bad decisions throughout. Your escort ship, hey look, it was an ambush! Like it should always be. Alright, let's chain it up. Chain laser is my friend. Oh, one day that chain laser. That chain laser and I are going to find a nice little place. Well, it's starting to get weird, so I'll hold off on the rest of that thought. I will say, I I got spoiled playing a fully unlocked version for so long, because to me, just sitting back and shooting like this is so lazy. I'm used to doing the micromanaging of, oh, I have to teleport them here, over here, pause this, pause that. When you have the gun win, it, it's it's just like you don't even have to try anymore. And I mean, right now, I need to sync up my lasers to actually get anywhere. Hmm. I'm gonna actually hold off on firing, because that guy did it for me. The whole laser saves this entire run. As I have probably said 8,000 times by now. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is I love the backgrounds. And how 
and how varied they all are. Yes, they're not the most complex art, but they do add a, just a little bit more character to every sector you jump to. And, and I'm really pleased by that. So, if we tend to download the data stores, you know, we'll get more information from a sector that's already half empty, or we can just strip it for parts. Considering the Rebel Fleet is right on my tail, I don't want to know about anything I'm not going to be able to jump to. It just frustrate me, so let's just scrap it for scrap. Scrappy dappy doo. You attack a small military outpost and a few freighters nearby. The rich mineral planet is an isolated location would be perfect for the illegal Mantis mining operation. As you consider your options, a ship launches from the outpost, and there we go. It, it is. And now you have to fight. The rare Mantis ship without a teleporter. Let's wait until both of these are fully charged, and then line up our shots. And especially now that I have no engines, that should be a thing. Let's go ahead. Get someone who can actually repair over there. Hey, that's what I wanted to see. That is not what I wanted to see. But at least the mantis over there is trying to fix the shields. AKA, failing to fix the shields. Explodes, leaving behind a central collection of useful scrap material. And we'll walk away from the mining operation forever. Whenever you get the chance, always heal up between fights. Because you never know when you're going to be stuck in an asteroid field. And all of your people are going to be on half health anyway. And then your oxygen goes out. Dark days, we call that one. Distress beacon down here, or spider web up into here. Distress down into there. You grab the distress beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between two large rocks. Must have been illegally mining. You know what? I'm going to be the good guy here. I'm going to go ahead and just carefully carve that ship out. Precise cuts around the asteroid, ship gives a quick burst of thrust, and the rock crumbles away. They thank you, and offer some resources they've collected. Oh, these are the nicest pirates in the whole galaxy. Ah. I actually have enough. I should consider doing an upgrade. I'm thinking... Oh, I should have done the upgrade before I ran off. Shouldn't have I. Who knows why the Mantis would venture so close to the sun? Perhaps it's to make it more of a challenge! I think I did that joke, too. Tried and true. Let's once again wait for both of those to get fully charged. You have no missiles, I am not afraid. Let's get the Dodger up though. We need to have someone on those engines. And actually, I will implement the anti-fire grid. It's not really that technical, it's just close all the strategic doors, leave the rest of it whole vented. So that way, I can't have a fire randomly starting and just running amok on parts of the ship I'm not even in. There we go. See? Look at that. Fire suppression took care of it, and I didn't have to worry about a thing. Leaving behind substantial collection of useful materials. I'm getting so much material out of this. Let's let's jump before upgrading this time, because well, I can't upgrade into danger zone. You arrive at the long range beacon. This is where you can jump to the next sector. It explains that every time. Fancy nearby station for aid. A friendly programmer gives you the schematics for a drone. Now, I don't understand how just having the schematics for a drone actually gives you the drone. But then again, I've been playing a lot of Mass Effect Andromeda, so I guess that logic now makes sense. Why does Andromeda give you the schematics, but not actually the thing itself? You know, now that's another thing I'm disappointed about in that game. 
And I will not have enough time before I get to the next jump point. Oh, I guess I already decided. Upgrading the artillery beam. Never a bad decision. If it gets me out of combat faster, the better. Next. The slug-controlled nebula or the rock-controlled? Neither one's a home world. So we have no idea what that one is. Uh, no use putting off the inevitable. The slugs that live in this nebula field are our leisure-centered civilization. Everything in slug life is done in the pursuit of more currency and more time in which to spend it on extravagant adventures. This inevitably leads to much treachery in open space. Vola scum. Ooh, a store. You cautiously approach a slug colony on a huge asteroid. It's a brave person who sets foot on a slug planet. It can take weeks to get the mucus out of your clothes. But there's business to be done. It has so much character, if you actually read. It is so worth reading during this game. Uh, let's get the important thing done first. Um, sell the hull repair drone, because I don't have drones. So now I'm back to even. I don't need another... Actually, I'm good with my current arrangement. Uh, I'll get a little more fuel before I go through the sector. Maybe it's because I'm still new to this, but I really am not finding much use for the flat cannons. Especially because I have a totally shield bypassing weapon, so flat cannons are just... When it comes to slugs, no news is not necessarily good news. However, if they're watching, they don't seem to want to confront you. There they are, lurking in the slowly moving purple shadows. I almost said shadows and mist shadows. Slowly moving. Okay, Black Market Weapons Trader spins you a tale of the dangers of the Nebula before pushing his wares. Purchase an unknown weapon for 45 scrap. Hmm. It could be a glaive beam, which would perfectly round out this entire ship's concept and wouldn't put me too far behind. But it might be a flat cannon, and I will never use it. So let's just attack the ship. Okay, waiting for all of it to heat up. Oh no, they have a flat cannon. And see, while I never find the use in using them, I do not like facing them. Maybe that's a sign that maybe that they are actually worth the investment. And I'm already thinking. Oh, there it is. Totally should have invested in that, shouldn't have I? Uh, we'll let this guy heat up a little more. There we go. You know, for, for this particular venture... Oh! You have to give a you're good so you don't destroy their ship. They're not giving me the weapon. And 28 scrap is not going to carry me through. If there were some fuel, I might, but... No. Oh, come on! Don't get mad. It's nothing personal. This wasn't worth my time. Okay. Yeah, having that artillery beam ready to go is basically like having a second ship at the ready, which is going to do all of your work for you. Because you think to yourself, okay, I've got this. And then... While you may or may not actually be in the process of actually accomplishing the goal, the whole beam is there. <laughs> Got it done, boss. He's like the best personal aid ever. You don't even need to tell him anything. He just gets it all done for you. See, look, 42 scrap. Totally worth demolishing them. Wow. I, this, this game kind of hardens you. Ah! So close! So about six more scrap, I should be able to upgrade the shields to the next level. But of course, in the meantime, with our downtime, let's go ahead and get some healing done. Now, one thing I do not like about the nebulas, specifically, and we haven't run into yet, is the nebula storm. 
That that is probably my least favorite thing in this whole game. It's even worse than the Ion Pulsing Star, which is new, and I had no idea it was coming. But... Oh, God, that's a long walk around there. I literally have to go through this, don't I? I'm going to hop out of the nebula for a second before I actually jump in. Ah, there's the storm. Oh, the nebula storm. You're right in the middle of an ion storm. Which, instead of just pulsing... You look at how much is gone now. I don't have enough energy reserves to even have any shields, nor run my guns. Oh. They generally avoid these storms, so you find one waiting in ambush, because he's insane. Let's just turn off everything. Turn off everything. Oh, it's a halberd beam, though. So I'm going to have... <laughs> and now we play the waiting game. I have... Approximately a minute and a half before all of my oxygen goes away. I will not be able to dodge this halberd beam at all, but that is literally his only weapon. And through two levels of shield, he can't do a thing to me. Given how much hull he still has left, and how slowly that's charging... Oh, I don't know, man. Nah, at least they didn't hit the thing! Oh, they did turn on the ion. Oh, no! Oh, man, this is not good. Put all my eggs in one basket, and now my basket's getting cut to ribbons. Come on! I'm gonna let them live. Hey, thank you. I'll take your fuel. Oh, my God. Time to... Time to power this off, turn on everything, and get the heck out of here. Got down to 29% oxygen. It's the tension just gets higher and higher as you're in these segments. Strangely, none of my crew took damage. Can't explain that one. And my least favorite part about all of this is that when you jump out of these storms... How was, wait a second, I'm right here. How was that in the nebulous? How did that have a storm? That's a glitch. There's no way that that should have happened out here. It's, uh. Yeah, look, now nothing powered up. Intruders are on board, but everything is like at half power because I just jumped out of the storm. It doesn't automatically refill your gauges. A, shugs, a slug ship hails you. We've detected some worrying radiation coming from your medical unit. Perhaps should, we should take a look. He signs off, your system shuts off, and their crew teleports aboard the from a nearby station. They don't look like engineers. You know, I like this these guys' style. The only ones I like better are the ones that um, turn off your oxygen before they start attacking you. It's especially brutal if they do that when you're uh, when you have some Lanius crew members. You know, those ones that are just scrap metal and don't need oxygen anyway. That is my favorite. So, let's get you out here, you over here, you jump in there, and you, Kelvin, um, yeah, we're gonna have you man the helm, let's get everyone in there and fighting. that sounds good. Call it the Irish solution. Fighting around the world. Oh no, they have a hole beam. No me gusta. Oh, this ship design. <laughs> and the whole... And my artillery beam did it for me. They cannot repair their oxygen. Chinese fire drill. It's one of the easiest achievements to get. This is the one where you have... Uh, the one where you have asphyxiation. So, they just run out of oxygen. Usually kinda hard. With that ship design, so easy it's laughable. You just target that one section. Hey look, we put the O2 in a place where we can't possibly repair it in the middle of space flight. I think that's an oversight. Nah, who would think to target that? 
The slug ship breaks apart and your systems return to normal. You collect what you can. Ooh, that's a haul. Now, let's get those shields up. Um, yeah. And a little more dodging. Rule number one. After you get a ton of scrap, always look around. God damn, what if there's a nice weapon in that store? Okay. You're surprised to find a ship without slug markers stranded all the way out here and move in to provide assistance. When you see the pirate insignia on the hull, you quickly reconsider. Let's go ahead and uh, attack Cthulhu's minions. What could possibly go wrong? And I didn't heal. I didn't listen to my own advice. I did not heal before jumping. It's going to come back and bite me, isn't it? Socio DM. Hang in there. You'll be okay. Alright, let's aim you now. Oh, yep, there we go. 23 scrap. 2 fuel. Not a big enough haul. It's a math game. You have to remember, my aim right now is just to get a little more scrap before I go to the store. Most of the time when you destroy a ship, a lot more scrap is given. Leave behind a substantial amount of useful scrap. And I still got the fuel. Why not? Let's just circle this entire beacon. Gathering up as much as we can. One of you is going to comment, Heal, you jackass! I'm sure of it. As you jump in, you immediately see an impressive slug ship with the Black Raven painted on one side. They hail you. Greetings! I am the dreaded pirate, Captain Knights. You must be full of fear, no? You have heard of me. No? No. Well, I have heard of you, and I must see if you are as dangerous as they say. I challenge you. I wonder if you decline this challenge, because I have literally never declined this, this arrogant warlord's challenge. Decline it. I see. However, you have no choice in the matter. They move into attack. Well, now if they ask for a surrender, I'm not saying boo to that. It's like, I didn't even want to be here. Oh, you cloaky... Oh. And let's go ahead and uh, start healing our ancillary ones. Here, you take the helm for a bit. Yep, there we go. And it starts. Turn off the O2, get to the healing bay. Did you cloak? You're in cooldown. Let's go ahead and hit you while you're uncloaked. Helped a bit, did not help enough. Fire is out. Oxygen back up. Oh no. Not good. Fix her up. Let's face it, with that down, my entire strategy goes to the wayside. I fix that. Oh, come on. You can fix it faster than that. You're an Engi. Faster puss. Oh, my goodness. All right. I need some more dodging. As fast as possible. So now we're going to start targeting their helm. Everyone, original positions. This is not good. This is a party wipe. We have to keep. Oh, here we go. Come on. Come on. And game. <sighs> Terrible luck in nebulas. Oh, well. Well, that was a short episode. Um, what did we learn from that? Well, if I'd healed before I jumped, I might have actually lived. Also, don't rely on one weapon to save your ass, because it's not always going to. That, that artillery beam, fantastic for bypassing shields, but as soon as they knocked it out, 
my entire game plan went out the window. They could dodge most of my beam fire, and I I had hubris and thought, hey, I can go ahead and get by with just two weapons. Because there was a chance to get some more weapons earlier, and uh, I simply passed it up. This is literally how every, I would say, 8 and 10 of the runs goes. Yeah. It's the nature of the game. And this wasn't even on a hard difficulty. Let's see how the stats go. Um, that <laughs> Literally, that is the second time I've ever played this particular version of the game with this uh, arrangement. First time I did get to the 8th sector, did not win. Let's see... Yeah, this is uh, this is our post-mortem final score. I, I look at that score and I go, why is this even close to the top scores on anything? In fact, the, the Sneak, which did not win, has my highest score on this. <sighs> oh. So, thank you for joining me. And... Uh, you know, I might I might play uh, with a different ship if people you know enjoyed this and watching me make some decisions that were not the best but realistic because I'm just a human being after all and as a human being I let my crew get completely run through with hull missiles. God, I probably should have had a teleporter. I had enough crew I could have done it, but I don't know if I ever had the chance there. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, let me know in the comments if you do want me to do another one and request uh, which ship you'd like me to use. Let's go ahead and open up the options here. Because I have access to all but two of them. I even have alternate versions of this. Uh, and I'll do it if you guys really want to see another failure run. Because, yeah, I am... I am dreading the fact that someone may come in and say, Hey, why don't you do it with that guy? That guy seems fun. I'm, I'm looking at you. You know who you are. You just, want to see, you just want to see me try to make this work. For the record, I have never, ever had success with this ship. I almost did once. And it completely fell apart at the end. It's just... Uh. But anyway. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you want to see more, just drop a comment. How do you end these things? <laughs>